To the merchant, the dollar takes a business trip. Then off to the farmer to buy new equipment and back to the worker in his salary slip. Everybody prospers, the butcher, the grocer. Great is the country and fine is the blend. Must there be depression? The answer is no, sir. Money in the pocket is money to spend. Money in the pocket is food on the table. Food Tom Glazer, Money in Your Pocket, here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez, our guest on the phone with us from Pittsburgh, where he's campaigning, is Ralph Nader, independent presidential candidate. Ron? Oh, Ralph, you mentioned how the Democrats themselves are being stampeded at this point by the Bush administration. In my column in the Daily News yesterday, I raised how another Democratic leader and another Democratic Congress handled the situation, uh, even a more dire situation, the, uh, in 1933, uh, on the, the, the two days after Franklin Delano Roosevelt was inaugurated as president, uh, there were thousands of banks. Uh, crashing at that point, and he immediately shut down all the banks on his second day in office, called Congress into an emergency session, and over the next hundred days adopted incredible legislation, uh, including the Glass-Steagall Act that we've mentioned quite often on uh, federal deposit insurance, aid to homeowners, uh, f farm subsidies, created the, tele the Tennessee Valley Authority, all in the midst of a crisis, probably the most progressive uh, amount of legislation uh, in uh, the nation's history. In any period. Uh, that's a quite different approach. Uh, and he specifically criticized the banks and Wall Street as being at the root of the crisis. That's right. In those days, they had a serious solvency problem uh, for these banks, which uh, they don't have by and large uh, today. Uh, it's, uh, and that was admitted by uh, Bernanke uh, yesterday. Basically, Bernanke is saying, well, we're doing this because the banks are contracting their credit and this is affecting the economy. Well, <laughs> you can deal with that problem uh, in a far better way than an ill defined uh, $700 billion bailout with total authority to the Treasury Secretary, with no judicial review, with no criteria, and no reforms. In other words, the Democrats should say, if they're going to concede this bailout, uh, is to say, well, we want comprehensive regulation and disclosure uh, of the financial industry to make sure this doesn't happen again. We want criminal prosecution of the crooks in Wall Street and disgorgement of their ill-gotten gains. Uh, we want a securities derivative tax and higher margin requirements to make speculators use their money, more of their money than other people's money, like worker pension funds, to keep down speculation, as well as to produce uh, revenues, which might lighten the tax load on working families. And we want to give shareholders control over the corporations they own. Uh, and they're not even talking about these kinds of reforms. And uh, this is the best time to get these reforms, because this is called the must bill on Congress, uh, in Congress, and, and if Bush wants his package, he's going to have to sign him. So there's no reciprocity here. Uh, it's the usual uh, fairly good questions by the Democrats at the hearings, uh, but because they don't follow through, they don't have adequate leadership, uh, they, it becomes a kind of posturing. It's, a, it's really maddening to watch uh, how vague Bernanke and Paulson are in answering one question after another. It's just a, an evasion where they keep saying, we need to do it, we need to do it. Well, and, 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 their, and their chicken little uh, material is conducted in closed session with Harry Reid and, and Nancy Pelosi and, and the Republican leadership. Well, Ralph Always Nader, some, something that isn't vague are the emerging rallies against Wall Street bailout that are being held today in over 100 cities. In Washington, protesters are gathering outside the Treasury Department at 4 p.m. Here in New York, a protest is set for 4 p.m. as well and Bowling Green Park near Wall Street. The day of action has been partly inspired by an email sent out Monday by New York journalist Arun Gupta. In the email, Gupta described the bailout as the biggest robbery in world history. Arun Gupta is a reporter and editor at the Independent newspaper here in New York. He joins us in the firehouse. Um, you've just been written up in Business Week. Talk about this letter. Talk about what you are putting out there. 
Well, I, I do a, a good bit of economic writing, and I was trying to decipher the plan this weekend, and it became quickly apparent to me that this is a financial September 11th, that the Bush administration was trying to use the shock of this crisis, this self-induced crisis in this case, to ram through legislation that was uh, highly ill-considered in terms of the actual economic merits on the one hand, and then on the other hand, it was this extreme power grab that would give these huge sweeping new powers to, to the Treasury Department. Department. So I wrote up this email. Um, I sat on it overnight because I was hesitant to send it out. I'm a journalist, not an organizer. But after talking with a few people, they felt I should send it out. So I sent it out to about 150 activists, organizers, and uh, media folks that I know in New York City. And it just exploded. You know, I, I don't take any special credit uh, for it. I, I was just tapping into this huge amount of anger and resentment that was out there. And when you say exploded, what was the response? Well, I, I I talked to people who, within one hour of me sending it out, and then them for I encouraged people, please forward widely. They told me that within less than an hour, they had received it back from five or six different people. Uh, by the end of the day, apparently, a lot of big groups started jumping on it, including unions. By the next day, it was being endorsed, and variations were being forwarded by True Majority, Code Pink, United for Peace and Justice. And uh, so it was just, it really um, showed the, the power of the internet. Internet in a particular moment. So, talk about these protests that are taking place around the country. Uh, well, I, it started as, you know, the idea is like, let's gather in Wall Street, and I thought maybe it'd be a dozen people and we'd be standing on the sidewalk. But now it looks like there'll be hundreds, even possibly thousands. And then tr a true majority picked up the call, um, along with United for Peace and Justice, one of the main anti war groups. And they said, you know, let's have these day of actions around the country. So, all over the country now, there are going to be protests in various uh, financial centers. I've been getting emails from people, you know, in, from every single corner of the United States um, uh, asking, you know, what's going on? How do we plug in? And so we're just trying to point them uh, to these websites. It's like, look, here's a list of the protests, or you can plan your own event. Um, and this is really coming from across the political spectrum. And, and as you said in your email, this is a leader list. There are no main organizations in charge or <laughs> no individuals in charge. Everyone's just um, participating themselves. And that's what's great about it. You know, when people say, who's organizing this, uh, I, I say no one and every one. Um, and this was just a call to self-organize. And, uh, you know, it's like, I'm just going to show up there as, as just one more person who's against this uh, uh, ridiculous bailout, this giveaway to the rich. Ralph Nader, who is Henry Paulson? I mean, we know he worked for Nixon, um, uh, was the aide to John Erkelman, the ex-con, the man who went to jail, then went off to Goldman Sachs. He and Alan Greenspan still being considered the economic wise men, even though this all happened under their watch. That's when you know the system is decayed and corrupt, that the people who brought us this disaster, Robert Rubin, uh, with Bill Clinton uh, pushing through the financial deregulation monster in 1999, which we opposed, um, which opened the gates for this kind of wild speculation and this casino capitalism, is still a an advisor. He's an advisor to Barack Obama. He's an advisor uh, to members of Congress. Henry Paulson cashed out at Goldman Sachs and in 2006, a half a billion dollars. Uh, and now he goes to Washington.